Every year, 35,000 high school students participate in a special event. They build robots and compete against each other. The robots are just a vehicle. It's a sport of the mind, but it's about much more than just winning. If I didn't have robotics, I would be a dull person. These guys get sucked into math and science. Each team is in for the experience of a lifetime. When we take you outside, are we going to wear across your chest that you're all a bunch of convicted felons? No. no. And in the end, these students will gain a whole new understanding of math, science, and technology. I, I've definitely learned a lot about you know, mechanical and things like that. And, um, and I've also learned a lot about leadership and about being part of a team and really learning to love a team. They have 45 days to build their robot. It begins now. Today is kickoff for this year's first robotics competition. We'll go down around this one. Put on by the national nonprofit organization FIRST for inspiration and recognition of science and technology, the competition sets out to inspire young people to be science and technology leaders, even at Ridgeview Academy, a Colorado correctional facility that houses teenage felons. My name's Adam Ochoa, 17 years old. Been at Ridgeview for eight months. I was on probation. I got a charge for uh, being intoxicated and trespassing and assault. And they took me in. We went to trial and all this. There are rookies who come in with baggage. They've been told that they're not good at math. They're not good at science. That. Uh, and that they ought to be, uh, do you want fries with that burger is what you ought to expect in life. For a small group of students from an inner city high school in Baltimore, this is their first trip to the robotics competition. They are an all-girls rookie team. My name is Sami and I'm an exchange student from Afghanistan. Our uh, team name is uh, Robodoff. The robot doves are an eager, young, bright group of girls, curious about science and technology and how it fits into this world. And I think this first program is exactly what they need to show them how it all fits together. The veteran Wissahickon team from outside Philadelphia is expected to go far in this year's competition and has been invited to the national kickoff in Manchester, New Hampshire. One of the things that makes Wissahickon unique and special is we we're very dedicated to, to mentoring others, to getting kids ins inspired. Um, inspiration is, is one of our big goals, trying to get uh, kids hooked into math, science, and technology. So I think that's one of the things that we're, we're pretty well known for, besides you know just the, the on-field success that we've, we've had. Ratchet Rockers. The Wentzville, Missouri team is in their fourth year of competition. Kickoff is amazing. We go to the St. Louis Science Center this year we had a lot of rookies on the team. Their eyes are just huge, like, there's no way I'm going to be able to do this. But the other kids, you know, they'll take them under their wing, they'll, they'll help them out, they'll show them how to do things. At nearly 50 kickoff cities from across the United States, teams gather to hear about this year's challenge for the first time. They don't know what type of problems they will have to solve. What type of robot to build in order to win. Welcome to the 2008 First Robotics Competition kickoff live from Manchester, New Hampshire. Greetings. We put first together because of a couple of fundamental principles. We believe that in a free society, you get what you celebrate. We celebrate sports nothing wrong with it. We celebrate entertainment. There's nothing wrong with that. But in our culture, somehow they became so big, they were crowding out, particularly for lots of kids and particularly women and minorities, they were crowding out the opportunity to celebrate science, technology, inventing, creating, thinking, solving problems. And we said, we're going to create a competition that's every bit as exciting and every bit as rewarding and every bit as accessible 
as bouncing a ball or standing on a stage. Having said all of that, we now should get to the new game. The goal of this year's game is to build robots that can manipulate 40-inch balls and race around a track. Two alliances compete in each match, scoring points by completing laps and moving the balls off, over, and back onto an overpass. Offensive and defensive strategies are allowed. After the presentation, team members and coaches pick up identical building kits that contain all of the parts needed to build their robots. Teams can also raise money to buy additional parts. Mr. Karpinski is our coach. He retired from NASA a few years ago. He seems confident about what he can do. You get this kit of parts with your two big boxes. There's no instructions for anything um, except some of the basic stuff, how things are laid out. But they have to decide how it's supposed to look, how it's supposed to drive, everything about it. They need to use everything that they know how, all their combined intelligence on, you know, how can we make this thing do whatever it's supposed to do. This school is designed around being an alternative to being in jail. Um, we are a a uh, 500 bed residential facility. If this facility didn't exist, the kids would be locked up somewhere. If I find disrespect flying in this team, the staff and I will sit down and I'm going to make the recommendation to remove the student from the team. And then I will sit with that student and I will tell that student exactly why that student is being removed from the team. And don't think it hasn't happened. I mean, there's going to be things stopping us. So, uh, I mean, we just got to get as much work as we can in the amount of period of time that we got. I guess I'm just have that nervous excitement for a sporting event, like when you're you're just ready to go and you're you're pumped. You don't know exactly what's going to happen. We're going over for our first brainstorming session. It's really a big day for the kids. You know, every team across the country is doing the exact same thing at basically the exact same time. We have a lot of people in the community that get inspired by what we do. Um, even if they're not into science and technology, they see the dedication of the kids. They see that if you work hard at something that you can be successful. Are you excited? I'm excited. My job is to sort of step back just a little bit and make sure that all the good ideas are coming to the top. So I feel like a heavy responsibility to make sure that that happens properly. The whole point of today is for all ideas, no matter how crazy you think it is, to come to the top. So the fundamental challenge for this year's robot is to push, lift, or throw a giant 10-pound ball on a court about the size of a volleyball court. We've been doing this nine years, and I think this is one of the biggest challenges we've ever faced. Either you design a mechanism to be able to actually grab it and hurdle it, or you can just take a piston and just hit it. Let's do that. With a 10-pound ball dropping like six and a half feet at the minimum, if that lands on top of any part of your robot that's not really well protected, your robot is destroyed. You have to come in like this to grab it. No, no, that wouldn't. No, that, that no. Wouldn't. Yeah, we're having casters. Not, no. No, 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 no casters. No, no, I'm talking about like. Uh, we don't have any practical ideas for the arm, which is a problem. You lift it off, possess it, and bring it down. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Basically, basically that. All right, I'm ready to speak. Right. Kyle is one of those guys that you can count on. He takes care of the shop. He takes care of the pit. Um, he makes sure that people are doing what they're supposed to be doing. Listen up. Thank you, Greg. We were thinking of doing a, a forklift design. You have your two skids, but have them with a like an arc in them, like the picture shows. Curve. A curve, sorry. And um, the curve will let you cradle the ball almost, so you don't really have to worry about 
getting hit from like the left to the right so it doesn't pop out or anything. I'm just trying to imagine this. So wait, you're saying you're gonna expand out like this and try and hug the ball from the sides? It's not not like yeah, it's total sides. You're like, not really like grabbing onto it, but like, you're you're scooping. Okay. Like, First order of business, unload the parts and make an inventory. Okay? There's a lot of parts. Those are little DC motors. you. There are some things that we can put together that are standard, like a gearbox. Okay, and we have two of them to put together. Most of the people think that if you're Muslim, they do not allow their women to go out to get education or to work outside. This does not fit. I think it's not true because it depends on how you think about something or how you think about your future. If you think about future, um, nothing can stop you to go out to get education or to think or to solve a problem. Done? Yeah. Done? Yeah. Good girl. Good job. Any country relies upon its technical base to solve the problems at hand. Almost anything you name. The solution involves science and technology. If we don't pay attention to that, we are going to be on the short end of the stick. Okay, so we built two motor, two gearbox, and this is gearbox, and gearbox is what that it controls the move, movement of the robot. We're in Wentzville, Missouri, which is about 40 minutes or so west of St. Louis. We're right at the edge of suburbia, but we're also rural. We got city meeting country. First off, uh, today is the what, third day of the first week of our competition, uh, and so our intentions by today are really to have a really good idea of what the design uh, is going to be looking like um, and start ordering parts. So if you have an idea, come to us and say something. Even if in the past we've said, well, that's a bad idea, it might be a good idea by now. Right, that's what Eric is one of our co-captains. He spent the bulk of his time working on the design and especially on how we're going to achieve the task this year, lifting up the 40-inch ball. He was very good at organizing everyone, getting everyone together, making sure no one was left out. That'll give you a little bit of an extra notch. But if we get a bigger sprocket like we had originally planned last year... Yeah. Michael was one of the kids from who graduated last year, and he's in college now, but he came back. Uh, to help out. Okay, and these are, these come down to some gear or some motor down to face the robot. The team is only four, this was their fourth year. They still have a lot of things to work out. They can see possibilities now. A lot of these kids like this, the really intelligent ones, they don't really have anything at school to do. You know, it's it's all you know, directed at sports or something. This is really one of the only places where you find a bunch of people that get together and really just say, hey, what can we do and how can we do it? In Colorado, the team at Ridgeview still has not begun building their robot. Just now, they get around to opening their kit. Wow. Ah. All right, everybody get with your checklist and find a part. The vibration isolators. The pressure gauge. It engages and enlists. It's as exciting as sports and entertainment. That's engaging. Here's a new potential 
future for you. Here's a, here's a career that you haven't thought about. And now and I've said that, let me prove it to you. Let's actually do something. That night, the team attends a basketball game. What happens after the game might spell the end for the robotics program. <laughs>